Hello and welcome. And I just noticed on TradingView that I can get data going back over 100 years for the Dow Industrials. I don't think the data is as accurate as it should be. But the fact that I can get this on here is pretty magnificent. And I say that because I've actually downloaded the intraday uh, data from the Dow Jones going back to around 1920 myself. And I did this a decade ago or close to such. Basically, at the end of the last decade was when I downloaded that data. And I have much better data where even on the daily time frame, I don't have these weird gap moves as and such. But it does show a good general idea towards uh, this market. Now, interesting, and I wish I could show you just even two years before this because it was 1913 when the Federal Reserve begun. And I don't remember if it was December of 1913 or it started in January. But either way, inflation for the first several years was rampant, like really, really bad. And when I see how this market goes from 53 to only 108, basically a 2x move, when inflation is as rampant as it is, then you have a good price correction. This is where fundamentals might be stating that price action long term at this stage should be going higher. Now, I've talked a lot about buy low, sell high strategies, and I've talked a lot within cryptos. And as we move into the roaring 20s, and we'll see if cryptos are the roaring 20s, interesting if it would be but when uh, i talk about the buy low sell high strategy i've talked about make sure you never sell out of the market so what i'll do uh, later on is maybe s see how well i can get these retracements because you can say fundamentally things are great you would say that back and say night right around here say 1918 fundamentally in the sense that inflation's been this bad dow's only at 82 this thing is going to go what much higher but you put a sell order here at 95 and you put a sell order at 110 and so on. And then when you sell, sell at 110, maybe you bought it back at, 80, at well, eight, if you're playing the bull market, maybe at 95 or 96. And that's how I would play the, the buy sell game if you've been playing it long term for something you think is going to go way higher is if you're selling at a level like 108 and you bought it before it say 87, you want to sell 108, buy back 95. And then you want to sell for higher high. You don't sell at 108, you sell 114. That's how I'm going to do this later on and just see what kind of gain that I'm going to get. But I'm not going to do that today. Just going to go over such because there's always going to be the choppy up and down movements. But when you know fundamentally something's good, then you're good to go. There's a situation where if you're ever looking for a play and you're just go scrolling through charts, can you see why this rally took place when you look at the setup from here? You could talk about inverted head and shoulders, but what we're seeing is a majorly contested resistant area on one, two, three occasions and even here was an attempt to get to that area almost got there but managed to get the higher low you're also looking at a fact at this point that you're in a long-term correctionary phase so at this point all you'd be talking about is making a move up to the big high of 117 but you came from this big low and all that type of stuff and sure enough and you would end up breaking it so we're moving well into the roaring 20s and small correction so if you sold in here maybe you got a buy back but when you look at the lows it's always making higher lows every single time this low is higher this one was higher and even in a situation like this if it makes a couple lower lows even that's just going to be an intermediate like type of a correction but didn't even do that it just kept going up 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 and the 18 average never gave any indication of the type of breakdown because even if we look back at say this period in here there is a situation in which the price action fell below so it made one leg lower here it established that level 
It had its correctionary move and it passed it. It goes below it here, so be it. It makes a higher low. And markets are, of course, uh, moving higher. And if you know the history of the stock market, you know what's coming here. And that's going to be the great crash. Which is why, if you said fundamentally, way back when, that the Dow, that the Dow had to go up so much more, because it was like 50, and you've had this great amount of inflation, well, there's your 7x move. How much was inflation from 1915 to 1929? And if you calculated, it was about seven times or anywhere in that, near that number. Well, then now, fundamentally, is, is that target number in place? And if you just keep selling and high peaks, you, all, you know a market has always got to retrace big gains. And there we have the situation. So there's a hardcore move to the downside. A situation in which it was taking out a fast amount of the more shorter term lows. This one here, although hit twice, I'm counting it as one low. Very short term low in here. This low was taken out. And this low pretty much was matched, at least as of this time frame. So, and I know with the red candles and green candles looking as it is, these are the situations that's always going to cause fear in people. And that's why you get uh, a lot of them that are just going to do their selling over and over and over again. And then they long term have, uh, well, in this case here, if you sold here and you waited, it worked. And that's one thing that you have to realize that what's the fundamentals here? Because if you realized there was good reason for a market crash. And I mean, what was the fundamental news back then? Then you would know when you have a move like this that you're gonna to have to be talking about correcting from the multiple lows at 67. So at this stage, we would be like, okay, now, now let's play the Fibonacci game. And I don't think people did this back then, nor did they use the 18 average. They certainly didn't go on the internet. Because I can remember when the internet didn't exist, but that's most people, a lot of people can today. So the top, I should have this, no, I shouldn't have it memorized. 380, 610. And it doesn't really matter because I don't even know what this. So we'll do 386 and 67. I'm going to calculate some Fibonacci from those levels. And the first level down, the 23.6 mark at around 256, was not support. And when you don't get support at a level, it's not a surprise to have a fast move to the next one. The low was, they stayed at 217.80, or uh, the low is uh, 195.35, I calculated 198. So even back then, the Fibonacci was working really interestingly well. So after finding support here, you're now retesting the level. Doesn't look too successful, nearly going. And what was the indication that it was very dangerous when you look at this? When you look back in this area here, what do we see? Well, we've seen that it had an interesting rally. Now there's nothing wrong of course, with uh, giving back some of its gains. The last few days came on lower volatility, but after its correctionary move, it was showing a lot of, what's the best word that I can say? Caution, this is time to be very cautious and, and it's uh, very close to having a bad situation coming. And the follow through here showed a lot of weakness and even furthermore into this area that it was showing that, oh, weakness amongst. And uh, if, we, if you have the fundamental reasons for why there is a reason for serious decline, then you go with it. Of course, long term, if you were to believe that the stocks would be good, I'm sure it might have worked out. But of course, this were turning into the uh, Great Depression as we move forward. And... Look at the resistance here. Situation. You go to a level, and in a sense, this is a retest of a decent pierce above in 1930.
But then when we break below it at the end of that year, a leg lower, noticeably lower from the Fib, resisting the Fib, and then leaving the 18, leave, no support found here. We've seen this happen several times. And then we support the 131. But where do we support it to? We're supporting it to this level here. This is now 61.8% of a down move. And there's another decent leg lower after we have that support test. If you're looking for any type of situation to get back in, what you're looking for is for it to settle down, have a move within the 18 to establish a good level. So originally it was settled, settled enough where you would have been looking for a break somewhere above this level, but then every single time it hasn't been that close for when you get back in, not even maybe here because it just only got to the highs got a little closer in here but after it broke resistance it came back to it the band that is and then nothing even close didn't even test that uh, resistance level and st as we move on it'll obviously uh, show there's always the failed moves that happen but notice another big move lower coming down this is a 23.6 percent level the lows of the market was 67 now what the lows were before i would There'd be a better Fibonacci to use as well when you're using levels of like 20 or 60 or the 1865 lows or the caveman day lows. Though they didn't have the Dow back then, but you get the drift. So continuous down moves and the 18 is never showing any reason for reversal. This is the bottom. And if you were playing the game of buying low selling high it means everything you sell up here you buy back that will be a future video i don't know probably be relatively soon but don't expect it tomorrow or monday so now this we can see at this point was the best attempt to end this bear market since its first attempt in 1930. now the danger of waiting for a setup is that the setup doesn't come and this thing just goes straight up. Now, I haven't looked at it from this point on, so I'm not too sure if that comes into place. I think you do get the setup that it should come in and there's gonna be, I know, I don't, I don't wanna spoil alert, so I'm not gonna say it actually. But anyway, uh, there's the coming back to the band. There's a little bit of established resistance. It's at a key level because it was at the last major level in which it had uh, support. So it had some time correction from early or mid December 1931 through, uh, well, a, little, a year later. Uh, well, not a year later, February of, two, of 1932, uh, two months later. So it's got that established resistance. So far, it's maintaining the 18 average. Obviously, falling below is a very strong thing here, showing weakness on the 18, at least until this green candle. And, there, and this is where you'd be very concerned of the market going lower. Now, this will not take out this low because, unless it was 32. It was either, I thought it was 40 or 32. So there we go. So there's our situation here. So the first play you have to, if you want to, would want to get back in, would probably be around now at 86. And you know there's a decent chance you can get a lot cheaper or at least wait for another setup. And who knows if that price would be cheaper or more expensive. But of course, when you've seen warning signs well, well before this, and again, there was no opportunity to even consider going long, waiting for strength until, of course, this time frame, at this moment. And there you'd have a situation where you finally can see that after continuous down movement on the 18, that you're changing it up. And I'm not going to put like any quarterly or month or monthly charts in, but these ones here would be just correcting itself on the more longer term from the weekly. And the weekly is a relatively long term as it is. Now, whether I would want to trust this Fibonacci at this stage, I would have to say no. Because one, 
this low is no longer really important. And if anything, I would just have to adjust it to this low, which is now, uh, the low is 40, 56. So let's adjust the numbers a little bit. And in doing such, the 23.6 correction was resistance, had a pullback. The 38.2% was resistance. And at that time frame was correcting solidly through time. And there's an interesting little show of strength here. Hey, why hasn't it gone down? It made a nice little move. But overall, you get a long standing correction basis. And you can be a lot of confusion here. And that's why I realized, you know what, just what the bother. I just realized now at this stage, decent move down here, you're going to 68. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're heading lower from there. Because to end this downtrend, it's at least managed two projected productive stages higher that having two steps up one step back can still be a bullish process and after continuing to do so more notice the irony here of well irony just notice the level of resistance 107 through 110 was and how you've at least had one great leg, leg higher so when you're looking at technical analysis you it's over the play has won. What, how much more of a gain you're going to get? That's it. But people in 2018, technical analysis are not going to care about this Dow Jones pattern today for how the market is going to move because all of this is irrelevant today. But the information for this, of course, is not. But at the time, when you're looking at a play setup, if we're back in here and it's doing this, if it's rolling over at this point, that's going to work as translate to a failed move because the indicators were saying, okay, we had a big down run. We got to the second key uh, level and it had a significant amount of time in this from, uh, where are we looking at? We're looking at 1933 through 1935. So a couple years of going sideways and on the weekly chart, that's like about a hundred periods. There's 52 a year. Uh, let's just see July of the year to, uh, uh, so 70 or so periods, that's 80, that's a lot. And then you have a good gain. Oh, we're leave, entering that area. Well, if you're along, I hope you get your sell orders in. And what do we do in this spot? We resist it. And at this stage, you're at the big, big level. This is the one you need to take out the downtrend. Because in retracement, when I got these four lines, these middle area, the biggest gap, this little large gap area, or larger gap in between here than the other two, completely neutral within the entire run. So it made a fast move to use the statement of leaving neutrality and attempting to regain that bull market via having, uh, by basically killing that uh, selling by successfully beating this level here. Because in bear markets, if you have a decent move and you rally to level three or the 61.8 and you start to decline, then it's not uncommon, or at least you can definitely consider it a reality to go back to the previous low, maybe take it out and even or have a, a, a bottom, a lower high, and then take it out later because that's what bear markets do. So this becomes a very big situation and we can see even though it had a lot of time there, it supported it in one occasion in 1937, it resisted that level and noticed that it came down close. Not to it, but again, I, the exact numbers. What do we got for a low here? Uh, 108. This is 97. I got no, 97.46 because I just got it rounded. This is the calculations that I did. It's 96 actually. At 96 so it's it's pretty much right on the number anyway so bullishly and bearishly I talk about a situation happening and the sell at this level was a situation that could happen both bullishly and bearishly and on a bullish level we can see how this was the case because I, I think it might shop around for the next uh, couple decades but 
this thing does end up uh, I don't know if it, if it goes below this in the future it doesn't go much below it that's what I can remember but what do we see afterwards we see a move close to this level staying in neutral situation now above this is bullish above below this is bearish super bearish and super bullish above and breaking down below here means you left a super bearish case and you're continuing to do such making a long term or a major wave lower is what you'd be doing thus extending the fibonacci and then breaking out above majorly bullish and again extending the fibonacci levels forward so as we see this a lot of neutrality going on and now we go back to it again so we're having the multiple hits to this level see when you get to a situation like this there is no reason to be surprised if this thing just keeps on exploding but don't expect that to be the favorite or or like it's always going to happen because it is overextended when you get all of these uh, choppy action like this in fact this is where you can say it's bullish and bearish to sell off again maybe come back down on a bullish level and, and finally make a higher low before breaking it somewhere around 138 i've seen that situation happen a lot but because of this long-standing test we have the spot where it finally managed to get back over trying to maintain the bullish run and there's the comeback so now breaking out past uh this level would be a super strong situation support it many times that's three four now you resist the 76.4 again both bullish and bearish to sell off look what happened it comes up pretty much right to that level so as a trader i mean buying here and selling here obviously worked out but regardless of the fact when the market is rallying like this if you're in position you're doing well that if there's ever a time to take some profits off the table when you see this thing going north of 220 then you know it's a decent time to do so and there you go and i talk about in cryptos how markets usually pierce extra or below in situations where you're trying to ensure that you are going to make successful trades and that uh, you don't care about getting what could be better plays or better gains then a safe play is always selling at around 224 ish area here 221 222 even though you realize hey i can go for 230 235 or I could even go for that 228. And you see, if you sold at 228 or 224, you had an opportunity. Now, I'm not going to adjust the lines, but this is where you can do, we got more longer term Fibonacci, but now within it, you can see that you got this big glow in here. We can just put the two numbers. Uh, what do we got here? Let's go uh, 161 and 229 or so, or 228. So the 200 and the 184 would be the numbers you'd be looking at but 200 oh how do you do and when you look at the situation here again the perfect example where it was a perfect bullish level to go down here and then when you come back you're like yeah i don't want to sell because it's bullish and uh, if, it, if it stops going up it might just go sideways yeah yeah that's what it did it just went sideways and then from this point on the year now is 1951 and this is a spot where my dad was alive and my mom was not alive and obviously i was not alive myself but we've went through several years and i guess at that stage there's going to be probably a few people watching the video that was alive within this time frame and Back in here, there's probably nobody. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this because I want to keep on going with this. But if I'm going to finish the video to today with what I'm thinking of doing in my head, which is continuously adjusting Fibonacci, that's what you got to do. Then I want to do this in a part two so it's not a super, super long one. And I'll do a series. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on again. We'll continue on from basically the start of 1950 51 area and we will uh, 
go until today adjust these numbers because as the market is stating now it would have been bullish from 1945 all the way up to now but it has now just entered a super bullish situation there's no line at this next level but I'll put it there because one of them would always be previous high right here also previous low now when you get to previous high after this you would have to calculate Fibonacci upside which we have from the 380 ish high and like the $41 low and if I put the data in upside target of 1524 which is not going to work out I don't think I think it's closer to a thousand but that's not a surprise for me because the Fibonacci, I mean, I need, I really can't say that because, yeah, the only two Fib, yeah, I w it would have to count because in order for me to count upside Fibonacci, I need an uptrend that goes down but makes a good higher low. So, why don't I just quickly try to find some data? And we'll give it a shot here. See if I can find out what the, oh, here's. Okay, I'm looking for a nice chart or the data, maybe. Okay, here's the history of See, this is where we need the log chart so I can actually read these numbers here. I can't see any prices anywhere. And I have to use another browser now. Okay. Okay, this is data from that they must have 1980s. Okay, this is data from the they must have 1980 47 we have 35 here let's just do an image search and this is a search for Dow Jones 1980s. Okay, well, we're looking at a linear chart. Or are we? I mean, it's moving in a logarithmic scale, but then, yeah, it's log. Yeah, it's log, duh. So now to calculate this, we're looking at about a low of about, uh, yeah, that counts when you look at it. I mean, that's just, well, that's a noticeable higher low from here. Now, as you can see, though, the 1500 number was not the accurate level which is why I often like to do stuff like uh, the six. Let me just calculate what 60. It's got to be somewhere around uh, uh, 24. That would be about uh, 22. So let's do about 22 as the low. See what Fibonacci would be. And the number I'd be looking at would be the 66. Because one of my theories is 
is you take the a decent low, decent high to a move, and then regardless of where the price correction is, you only take the 61.8 down, which translates to the 38.2. As the reason for that is if a market barely corrects or it has a time correction, then that would give you a better accurate reading because then the Fibonacci would say it's going to have an up target that's just too low. So on the contrary, if a market has a bigger pullback than normal, and we can see that this 43 low represented a 23.6% down move, interestingly enough. So therefore, if I use a low of 66 and the 383, we'll see what we get. Eleven thirty-five, which will probably be end up being more accurate than the number that I'm going to put a line on, because that is uh, again that's the theory I've been having for uh, quite some time. Because the only way I've been liking the Fibonacci upside over the last while, like even since I've been using it, is when it has a good correction, but not too small and not too deep. And this was a pretty deep correction, as. I would have been probably stating at even 100 and, 6, 100 and then the price of 60 in those areas that, man, it's just down so much. You got to buy and you get more, uh, and go down more. And you'd have to buy again if you were long-term bullish about the situation. But we're going to be seeing uh, a bull run, sideways action, a bull run, sideways action, and a breakout right now after that. So we'll get to that in the next video. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.